Let's talk about ugly cars. <laughs> uh, the reason being is I got an email from a viewer of mine, Douglas. He writes, Hi Nick, some advice please. I need to buy a really ugly car without going into too much boring detail. This is a revenge purchase, so I need to get it just right. <laughs> okay, so before we get onto the cars, I have to say I have nothing but respect <laughs> for you, Douglas, for buying a car out of revenge. I grew up with four very smart, very annoying younger sisters and I used revenge as a security blanket to keep me focused and to keep me sane. And so respect for keeping the fine art of revenge alive and well in this day and age. Uh, well, Douglas doesn't go into too much detail as to what his budget is for this ugly car, but I can assume that he's looking for a new car and I can assume also that he doesn't want a car that's fun to drive. What's the point in making someone drive an ugly car but they still get enjoyment out of driving it? So we're looking for a very ugly car that is also no fun to drive. And the good news is that there's plenty to choose from. Every manufacturer has at least one, sometimes several, buck-toothed, inbred, hit-with-the-ugly-stick models. So lots to choose from. And of course, the model that everybody immediately jumps on is the Pontiac Aztec. Uh, which a lot of people consider the ugliest car ever made here in North America. But the problem is that the Aztec has now become cool. <laughs> Thanks to Breaking Bad and everyone else that loves them, and they're kind of fun to drive as well. Um, yeah, that, we, we have to rule that model out. As ugly as it is, it's becoming too cool. They're even starting to appreciate in price. <laughs> Who would have known? So, we'll have to look um, to the mainline manufacturers. And even the fancy car models have some ugly models. Like Take Mercedes-Benz, for example. You know, they are responsible for, for some horrific cars in the past, like the B-Class, the R-Class, and even in their modern lineup. Um, the CLAs are not too good looking, uh, and the GLC. I mean, my God, what happened with that car? I think what they did was they looked at some of the other manufacturers, like BMW with their X6, their ugly X6, and Tesla with the X-Type, and thought, hmm, we need to have a humpback bell ringer of a car as well, and so they produced the GLC. <laughs> what a disaster. But yeah, uh, that is still fun to drive, so mm, I don't know that we can include that. And speaking of BMW, most of their range is pretty nice at the moment, uh, and they've just produced that beautiful 8 Series. Man, that's going to be a sexy car. Um, but of course, they still have one or two little mm, questionable cars in there, the Grand Touring 3 Series, <laughs> the X6. Mm. But without doubt, their worst car at the moment is that... <laughs> Hobbit of a car, the i3. I mean, <laughs> it's like a Barbie doll that's been down the waist disposal. It doesn't matter what angle you look at it, it's just not right. How did that car make it to production? I don't know. It's got no redeeming features. And if we move on to some of the mainline brands like Honda, you know, Honda's produced nothing startling, but mostly pretty good looking cars in the past. But lately they've started to swerve off into the unknown, like the new Civic. I mean, <laughs> what is wrong with the ass of the new Civic? Looks like a baboon from the back. In fact, the front's not too good either. And then there's that Cross Tour. Thank God they killed off the Cross Tour. I guess no one was buying it anyway. Um, but then there's the Clarity. Has anyone actually seen one of these things? I haven't. I think they're only sold in California. Thank God. <laughs> Keep them caged over that side of the country. My God, what happened? What happened in the design shop for that car? I mean, how do you even describe that car? And then there's Nissan, or Nissan as they call it here in North America who have historically produced some horrific looking cars. But right now, most of their lineup's not too bad. They do have the Duke, which is a kind of love it or hate it, little frog face looking thing. But it is kind of fun to drive. Uh, and then there's a Cube, which has finally been killed off, thank God. But really, the turd on top of the ugly Nissan pile is the QX80. <laughs> that thing is just a visual feast of design missteps. And, and it all comes from its previous generation, the QX56. Uh, which got, came under a lot of criticism for being super ugly. So the designers at Nissan just doubled down and said, well, we're going to make this, this version even uglier. And there's a new version coming, so God knows what they're going to do to improve on it. But, you know, it's just got sort of bulbous lumps everywhere, and the, the headlights are sort of off-center, tail lights look sad, they've got the fake um, vents on the side. It's just a beast of a land yacht. But once again, it's fun to drive, so can't be included. No, for... For true hideousness, we have to look to this man for inspiration, Mr. Fukichi. He is taking Toyota Lexus and grabbing them by the nuts and pulling them into the swamp of despair. He is responsible for that hideous trapezoid grill on all of Lexus's. He has been fiddling around with that grill now for over a decade. 
He saw the grill on the Audis and thought, oh, if Audi has a big ugly grill, we've got to have a big ugly grill on the Lexus. So he's been tinkering with that for years and years and years. And one drunken night with a bunch of hookers, he decided on the worst one. And now they've all got it. And I feel bad for Lexus because they make pretty good cars. But they've got that hideous grill. And the only one that actually works well on is the LC. I mean, the LC is a beautiful car, even with that hideous grill. Um, but now he's working his magic over in the Toyota area. And he completely misunderstands the Toyota buyer. The Toyota buyer wants a nice, reliable, economical car and wants to fly under the radar. They don't want to be making a fashion statement and certainly not an ugly fashion statement. But yeah, the new Corolla, the new everything from Toyota is starting to look hideous because of his touch. But the one he's really done a job on is the new Prius. I mean, this is a conservative car and he has completely destroyed it. Um, I remember the first time I saw one on the highway, I thought I'd been eye raped. It's like looking at an eclipse. <laughs> I knew that if I kept looking at it, I could suffer permanent eye damage, but I couldn't take my eyes off it. It is something else. And I've actually got to drive one. If you want to see me driving one, it is a link up there. Um, but yeah, obviously the, this Prius is just hideous from every angle. And you know, even though gas prices are down at the moment, the sales of Priuses have completely tanked because of the design of this car. It is something else. So this is the one Douglas. I think the new Prius is the perfect car in every way. It's both just so boring to drive, plus it is hideous to look at. I mean, from every angle, from above, below, from side, front, <laughs> it's just, there's just no angle which is sort of its television shot. So yeah, I think your perfect revenge car at this point is the new Prius in any color. Any color will do. It is just something else to behold. And if you guys think I'm wrong, there's an even worse looking car out there, please put it in the comments below. And uh, also, we've got new t-shirts coming in the coming weeks. This is one of them. It should go up on the site this week. Um, if you want to buy one of these t-shirts, I'm also now, of course, um, including stickers, the, including the Danger Doggers driving stickers now going out as well. So yes, new, new t-shirts coming to my site if you guys want to buy t-shirts to support me. Hey, William. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below as to what your thoughts on some of the cars I've talked about and some other ugly cars that, uh, that you come across. There's plenty out there. Thanks for watching. Bye then.